Hey YouTube, got another one. It's my Colt SP1 in 223, but first. I'll leave it open for now. This is uh, the original AR-15. It even says AR-15 right there. Then the Colt still owns the trademark to AR-15, which they got from Armorlite. This particular one is a light production SP-1. I think this was made in 82, I believe, 82 or 83. is when they switched over from making SP-1s to making uh, the more A2 style, or as the uh, rounded handguards. I think the first one still had the A1 rear sights and still had the slab side lowers. They had a... The A2 handguards, and they start having heavier profile A2 barrels, and then they just add on, like quickly add on the A2 sights with the rear sight drum on it. Still has a uh, two little apertures, A1 length buttstock, A1 length pistol grip. Of course, the A1 handguards. And of course, it's safe semi. No full auto, unfortunately. And of course, there's a hole in the can handle for mounting a scope, if you so wish. And of course, full release. Always. No forward assist though. Like the very early M16s, for example, don't have forward assist. No brass deflector. So brass will come straight back at you, especially if you were to shoot left handed, you'll be probably eating brass depending on the ejection pattern. That ammo. This also has the. Uh, Hard to see. Larry Star Trapdoor butt plate that was added in the A1 models, along with the bird cage flash suppressor. Unfortunately, it's the older, like the A1 or appropriate A1 flash suppressor where it's got cuts in the bottom. So if you're shooting low to the ground, I'll be pushing up dust and dirt, which is an improvement on the A2 flash suppressor. It open. Let's link on there. One complaint I do have about the SP ones is let's see if they'll show up in the video. You got these screws, one on each side, and you gotta counter rotate them in order to take the upper receiver off, which I really do not like. I prefer just an actual push pin. I still don't fully understand the rationale and why Colt did that from what I've been told it was to reduce the risk of full auto components being used on the SP1s, which the only part they're really worried about for full auto is the bolt and an auto seer. Which this one it doesn't they doesn't have the block that Colt likes to put into preventing auto auto sears in. So there's that, but it does have a shaved down bolt to not trip auto sears. So you have to use a M16 bolt. But other than that, it's basically standard AR-15 affair. The other thing is that it doesn't have that little lip that more modern lowers have, so getting the dust cover up is a bit more difficult. It might not be going through in the video, but it has more of like a gray color than uh, the more modern like black oxide 
finish that ARs have. And of course, six Air Patine magazines like this Colt 20 rounder. I think I got somewhere here. This El Cheapo Israeli clone of a thermal magazine. That was them as well. But I prefer to look at the old 20 rounder myself. Yeah, it was more classic look. And of course, you know, the whole Vietnam connection. Because the only the rattling is, that's the cleaning kit inside the buttstock that this rifle came with. But it's a very lightweight rifle, like Air 15 should be. People seem to forget that the Air 15 was meant to be a, a lightweight weapon. And this one, I think, is seven pounds maybe it's very light this is probably my lightest ar i've i have like even lighter than my a2 which is also pretty much a slick side lightweight rifle very good look at it I've been toying with the idea of selling this because evidently these things are going for crazy money right now. When I got this, I think it was maybe twelve or fourteen hundred dollars, maybe not even ten years ago. And I went to look on Gunbroker just out of curiosity, and they were going for like three to four thousand dollars. I don't know if these guys are on drugs or the value on these things have just exploded. I don't know. I do like shooting it though. Anyway, I hope you have a nice day.